This is an audio recording of the article entitled Effects of Hurricane Ivan in the Lesser Antilles and South America from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. This article was recorded by user Fleury Voru on July 11, 2008. Effects of Hurricane Ivan in the Lesser Antilles and South America the effects of Hurricane Ivan in the Lesser Antilles and South America included 44 deaths and over $1 billion in damage, primarily in Grenada, where it was considered the worst hurricane in nearly 50 years. Ivan developed from a tropical wave on September 2nd and rapidly intensified to become a major hurricane, passing through the southern Lesser Antilles on September 7th with winds of 125 miles per hour, or 205 kilometers per hour. At the time, its tropical storm force winds extended outward up to 160 miles, 260 kilometers, with hurricane force winds outward to 70 miles, 110 kilometers, and the northern portion of the eye passed over Grenada. In the region, the worst damage occurred in Grenada, where the damage total of 1.1 billion U.S. dollars represented 200% of its GDP. The hurricane damaged more than 14,000 homes in the nation, and 30% of the houses in the nation were destroyed, which left about 18,000 people homeless. A total of 39 people were killed by the hurricane on the island. Elsewhere, moderate damage was reported in northern Venezuela, where at least three fatalities were reported. One person died each in Trinidad and Barbados. The name Ivan was later retired. Table of Contents Section 1. Preparations Section 2. Impact Section 2, Subsection 1. Venezuela and Trinidad and Tobago Subsection 2. Grenada. Subsection 3. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, and Northward. Section 3. Aftermath. Section 4. See also. Section 5. References. An info box entitled Hurricane Ivan, Category 3 Hurricane is displayed in this section to summarize the information presented in the article. Areas affected? Windward Islands, especially Grenada, Venezuela. Date, September 2nd, 2004. Highest winds, 120 miles per hour, or 195 kilometers per hour, for one minute sustained. 135 miles per hour, or 215 kilometers per hour gusts. Fatalities? 44 direct. Damage? 1.1 billion U.S. dollars in 2004, or 1.25 billion 2007 U.S. dollars. Section 1. Preparations. Early in the duration of the storm, the National Hurricane Center consistently forecasted Ivan to track further to the north than in actuality. Late on September 5th, the government of Barbados issued a hurricane watch for its territory. Shortly thereafter, St. Lucia was put under a hurricane watch, and Grenada and its dependencies were put under a tropical storm watch. As the hurricane approached the southern Lesser Antilles, more watches were issued, and by 24 hours prior to Ivan passing through the island chain, a hurricane warning was in effect for Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, Tobago, and Grenada, and a tropical storm warning was in effect for Trinidad. With the path of Ivan more southerly than predicted, 
The hurricane warnings were downgraded to tropical storm warnings for the northern islands, and by late on September 7th, when the eye of the hurricane passed near Grenada, hurricane warnings were in effect for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, and Grenada. Subsequently, a tropical storm warning was issued for the northern coast of Venezuela through the Guajira Peninsula of Colombia. On Venezuela, Citizens in coastal areas of Sucre and Isla Margarita were moved to safer areas, and several thousands were evacuated due to the hurricane. The Simon Bolivar International Airport, as well as three other mainland airports, were closed. Petroleos de Venezuela S.A. temporarily closed its oil refinery in Curaçao, and two ports were briefly shut down. This caused a delay in two oil deliveries. The Valero Energy Corporation shut down its largest oil refinery in Aruba. Prior to the arrival of the hurricane, oil companies in Trinidad and Tobago ceased production and removed workers from offshore rigs. The Atlantic LNG Company closed exports. Seven shelters were opened on Tobago, where about 560 people evacuated for the storm. Most evacuees were from low-lying areas, and on the day of the storm's passage, most schools and businesses were closed. The two main airports in the country were closed, with one airline canceling all of its flights. Over 1,000 people evacuated to emergency shelters on Grenada, including hundreds in low-lying areas and in the capital city. Some shelters were damaged during the hurricane, forcing the evacuees to go elsewhere. Overall, the population responded little to the official advisories and recommendations which potentially contributed to the death toll on the island. More than 1,000 residents of St. Vincent and the Grenadines evacuated to 28 emergency shelters. On Barbados, officials closed schools and government buildings and prepared shelters prior to the arrival of the hurricane. To minimize danger, the island power grid was shut down. Four shelters opened on St. Lucia, where many people sought safety during the storm. Section 2. Impact. Section 2, subsection 1. Venezuela and Trinidad and Tobago. Along the northern coastline of Venezuela, the hurricane produced heavy precipitation and a storm surge of about 13 feet, or 4 meters which damaged 60 homes. Sustained winds on Isla Margarita peaked at 26 miles per hour, or 42 kilometers per hour, and the most affected states were Vargas, Aragua, Carabobo, and Anzoategui. Rough waves capsized 10 boats and closed several beaches, and one person drowned due to the surf. Further inland, two people drowned due to an overflown river, and near Caracas, a man died after strong winds toppled a wall. The combination of rainfall and winds destroyed 21 houses and blew the roof off of several others, affecting 1,376 people, of which 80 were left homeless. Power outages and lack of water were reported. In the country, the passage of the hurricane caused 127 injuries, and a death toll reported between 3 and 5. An initial news story reported 28 people missing offshore on three boats. Moderate wind gusts of up to 46 miles per hour, or 74 kilometers per hour, were reported in Tobago which downed several trees and caused power outages in seven villages. Power was cut to more than 30% of the island. Twenty villages on the island suffered various forms of damage, and at least 45 homes lost their roofs. The hurricane left 22 people homeless and directly impacted about a 1,000 people. The hurricane caused one death when a falling tree killed a woman. Wave heights were estimated at 65 feet, or 20 meters, and at least one home collapsed and fell into the ocean. 
rainfall from the storm's passage unofficially peaked at 16.2 inches, 411 millimeters, on the island, which caused some mudslides. Some crop damage was also reported, and overall damage on Tobago was estimated at 4.9 million U.S. dollars. Damage in neighboring Trinidad was minimal. Section 2, Subsection 2, Grenada. Passing just to the south of the island, Hurricane Ivan produced strong winds on Grenada, with sustained winds reaching 120 miles per hour, 195 kilometers per hour, and gusts peaking at 133 miles per hour, 215 kilometers per hour, at Point Salinas International Airport. The airport recorded 5.26 inches, 134 millimeters, of precipitation during the hurricane's passage. Of the nation's six parishes, the four southernmost ones were most severely affected, constituting 80% of the total population. The strong winds impacted more than 14,000 homes in Grenada, with 90% of the nation's houses damaged, and of which 30% were destroyed. The capital city of St. George's was severely damaged, where every major building was either damaged or destroyed. Its passage either damaged or destroyed 85% of the structures on the island, including the nation's emergency operations center and a 17th century prison, which allowed many inmates to briefly escape during the height of the storm. The hurricane damaged or destroyed 75 primary or secondary schools, with only two left in working condition. All of Granada was left without power or running water. Tourism was adversely affected. An estimated 60% of hotel rooms were damaged. The winds downed 80% of the nutmeg trees on the island, with other crop losses varying between 60 to 90%. An estimated 18,000 people were left homeless by the hurricane, and about 700 people sustained injuries from the storm. Ivan was considered the worst hurricane to strike the nation since Hurricane Janet in 1955. Its passage resulted in 39 fatalities and $1.1 billion in damage, about 200% of its GDP, and of which about 45% resulted from housing damage. Section 2, Subsection 3. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, and northward. Wave heights from the hurricane reached 20 feet, or 6 meters, along the coastline portions of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which washed away two homes. The storm surge destroyed 19 homes and damaged 40 more. On Union Island, the winds damaged the roof of a hospital, while the northern portion of the island sustained heavy damage from the waves. Moderate damage was also reported on Palm Island and Caracou and Petite Martinique. The winds left more than two thirds of the island without power and also damaged the island's banana crop. Damage in the country totaled forty million dollars. On the island of Barbados, sustained winds peaked at sixty nine miles per hour, or one hundred and twelve kilometers per hour while gusts reached 92 miles per hour, 149 kilometers per hour, which damaged many trees and roofs. A total of 531 houses were damaged, of which 43 were completely destroyed. Additionally, four hotels sustained some damage. The winds left most of the island without electricity, though officials worked quickly to restore the power. Rainfall from the storm was light, remaining less than one inch, 25 millimeters, in most areas. Storm surge and wave action caused beach erosion that severely damaged most coastal roads. One death was reported on the island, and damage was estimated at more than five million U.S. dollars. Strong winds and a rough surf 
caused moderate coastal damage to southern portions of St. Lucia. The combination impacted houses near the coast and also led to losses in the banana crop. Minor roof damage was also reported, and damage totaled 2.6 million U.S. dollars on the island. Three serious injuries were reported on the island due to the hurricane, though no fatalities were reported. In Dominica, winds reached 43 miles per hour, or 69 kilometers per hour. High waves from Ivan caused light damage to southwestern Martinique and Guadalupe. Section 3. Aftermath The government of Barbados created a Hurricane Ivan housing recovery project, which repaired or rebuilt 190 houses for people without the available funds. Around 90 homes required minor immediate repairs, while the rest required significant reconstruction. The project finished in early 2006 for a total of 5 million Barbados dollars, or 2.8 2007 U.S. dollars. Several nearby countries assisted Grenada in its aftermath. The government of Guyana shipped about 250,000 U.S. dollars worth of sugar, as well as 100 members of the Guiana Defense Force, to assist in restoring order and reconstruction. The government of Trinidad and Tobago sent 190 policemen, and the government of Anguilla sent 1,230 cases of water. A committee of Caribbean nations realized the local governments could not provide the support that Grenada needed in its aftermath, and thus turned to international assistance. Within a day of Ivan passing to the south of Grenada, the United States Agency for International Development deployed 67,600 gallons of water, 500 rolls of plastic sheeting, four 10,000-liter water bladder kits, and a water treatment kit. Assistance from the USAID totaled six million U.S. dollars within a few weeks of the storm's passage, primarily in aid for reconstruction and rehabilitation. In the weeks subsequent to the hurricane, the European Commission Humanitarian Aid Office provided 3 million euros. By a year later, housing redevelopments and disaster preparation problems continued after being impacted by Hurricane Emily. As a result, the ECHO provided 1.2 million euros to Grenada in September 2005. Nine months after the hurricane, Chinese officials provided assistance in reconstruction and handling foreign debts after meeting with the Grenadian Prime Minister. In 2007, Chinese officials funded the construction of a new 40 million U.S. dollar cricket stadium near St. George's. The Caribbean Development Bank approved a 10 million U.S. dollar loan requested by the government of Grenada in July 2005 which was intended to assist in long-term development of the housing, business, and environmental sectors. Emergency operations in Grenada, in coordination with the Pan-American Disaster Response Unit, ended in July 2005. Within a few days after the hurricane passed, the Grenada Emergency Operations Center temporarily prevented relief supplies from entering the country to ensure the safety of the incoming items. The decision was reversed shortly thereafter, and planes flew supplies during daylight hours into the reopened airport. Severe looting occurred in the immediate aftermath of Ivan, prompting police officials to enact a curfew for the night hours. In the first week following the hurricane, aid was slow to the affected residents, due to the lack of an efficient aid distribution system. Thirty official shelters and seventeen prepared ones housed over 5,000 people in the aftermath of the storm. Thousands of people lost their jobs due to the hurricane, with all businesses shut down following the hurricane. By two months after the hurricane struck, 65 schools were opened, some of which serving as shelters. Water and power were gradually restored to the island. By a year after the storm's passage, 
all schools were reopened, and most buildings enacted provisional repairs. Officials determined around 10,000 houses on the island required complete reconstruction, while a further 22,000 needed repairs. The government of Granada initially planned to rebuild 1,000 houses in the year after the hurricane struck. By June 2005, 260 families were provided houses, with a further 85 under construction. The government also established a material assistance program, which provided $5,000 of free materials to more than 5,000 families as well as a total of $4.3 million in low-interest loans to 148 families. Several indirect fatalities occurred in the aftermath of the hurricane, primarily senior citizens. Section 4. See also. Hurricane Ivan. Section 5. References. There are references available in the written form of this article. Please be sure to verify information found on Wikipedia using the references provided or cross-referencing the information yourself. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org copy left slash fdl dot html